our speaker for today. I know that I think he had a lot of uh, job in his company and he's so busy. No? But the good thing is he's not forgotten to to work in the company of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And he had a lot of uh, he is already trained uh, when he was in Bari and he involved a lot of ministry there and the first time when I saw him here when he started a um, uh, uh, life group <coughs> when, when he was uh, in a previous church really I, uh, I saw him that he's very energetic and excited always to to praise the Lord you know? so uh, we are very thankful to God because God is brought him here in New Zealand and we also uh, and we also um, ano yun na tayo na nabiyayaan tayo ng knowledge na na kanyang natutunan sa salita ng ating Panginoon and now may I call on uh, Pastor Ferdy Thanks for the introduction Pastor Nelson Oh, praise God. So, are you ready to hear the word of God today? Amen. You know that every Sunday is another day. And I'm sure that God will give a message for you today. Amen? Amen. Can you say to the person next to you, God has prepared something for you today. Amen. And, uh, Praise God. Uh, our attendance, I can see that uh, we're almost, uh, all our members are here. I can see any absent today. Praise God. Well, Don, where are you, Don? Uh, I think it's only outside at the moment. But, uh, you know, uh, thank you very much, Pastor Nelson, for the introduction. As uh, he was mentioned that uh, when I was involved in another church, I was also very, you know, keen to share the word of God and to to find other people to share the word of God with them. Amen. So, before we proceed with our message for today, uh, there's a one special announcement that I want to give to all of you. You want to know that? Amen. Amen. I will be having a daughter-in-law is coming Saturday. Mm, intentionally planned. Just to make sure that she will see this. This is a, my formal invitation to all of you to attend with the wedding of my son, Jeremiah, with uh, her girlfriend, uh, his girlfriend. And that will uh, be held in Rajora Baptist Church on Saturday, 26 January at 4 p.m. So I already uh, informed Takumi with regarding this this morning. So hopefully that you can have fine, fine time to attend. And see you there in the venue. Mm, exciting for my life and also for my life of my wife. So after that, we don't have any children anymore. And uh, it seems like we're running together inside our house. <laughs> okay. What is the title of our message last week? Have you remember it? The title of our message is all about time to harvest. It's a time to harvest, and we have taken that verse in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. It says, uh, Jesus said, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So, it is our, you know, goal or theme for this year is to find the people for Christ. Amen. And even we have shown this step-by-step -step production of Christians. If you are here last week, I'm sure that uh, you are familiar with this step-by-step uh, um, -step production of Prisha, but at the same time, we also posted this in our FB group, if you have seen it. Mm. Now today, our message is all about Jesus sends out the twelve. So last week, uh, it's time to harvest, and now Jesus is sending people to find 
the lost or the other people who are looking for Christ. And in Luke chapter 9, I want you to read with me all together for this passage. Uh, in Luke chapter 9 verse 1, let us uh, read all together. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure the sick. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they sent out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Thank you very much. Here, uh, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus reminded us that I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes. When you say shrewd, it's like alert. Be alert as snakes and as innocent as dogs. Luke chapter 9, it says here again that when Jesus had called the twelve, he had the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Who are the twelve? Do you have any idea who are the twelve? Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirit and to heal every disease and sickness. Here, how many disciples did Jesus sent per group? What do you think? Is Jesus sent one by one? Like Matthew, go here. Simon, go here. Peter, go here. Now, when we look at this verse, in Mark chapter 6, verse 7, it says, He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So, what does it mean, unclean spirits? Meaning, those who are not in the presence of our God. Especially those who are under the influence of of evil spirit in their life. So there are unclean spirits. And here, why Jesus sent the disciples by two? What do you think? Why not alone? It is also possible. You know why? It says here, the benefits of being two. It was just as chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, it says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them out. Do you believe with that? Amen. I'll give you an example. In the church that I was involved before, there was one associate pastor. And what he said, I remember during that time, we went in uh, in his place. It's a common area, it's a restaurant. And I remember what he said, that you know a lot of couples or partners that are coming here, but they are not truly a uh, you know husband and wife. They're only using this restaurant just to show themselves, but they are not a true husband and wife. He said that he will do something so that he will evangelize the people there. But it's so sad, after a couple of months, he was the one who was taken by the sin. One day, he was standing in front of the lectern saying, I committed a sin to another room. He was alone. That's too hard. When you're going alone, there's a tendency that a lot of we can say temptation that can happen on that place. It is true. Are you there? Amen. I'll give you an example. First time I went to uh, another country to work alone. I don't have any friends. I don't have any relatives. I was like, you know, a stranger 
on that country. At the back of my mind, I can do all the things that I want to do. Even finding the girl for me, even already married during that time. Because I'm alone. Nobody will tell to my wife that I have this new partner. But praise God, before it was happened, I was involved in one church on that country. And I managed to drive myself going to the church instead of going to, uh, you know, sin place. I remember Brother Marlon and Brother Pedro, along with uh, Brother Jesse, when we traveled going back from Cape Ringa, going back here, we were in Picton. We're drinking coffee. Jesse was preparing coffee. We are in the park. Nobody were there, just only us. All of a sudden, two beautiful ladies came out and talked to them. What you are doing there? There are white colors, and I remember I was walking towards our group, and then these two ladies are standing away from them. I passed by with them, and they're saying, hello, I just go straight, hi, I just go straight. When I'm coming back, I was taking some food in my, put in the plate, and those ladies, they are saying, is that our dinner? I know, I just stay taking a walk going to the other side. So after bringing the food to my wife, I need to come back again and get something to them. When I was going back, these two ladies are asking another, uh, saying something. You know what he, what they said? It's fun time. If you are alone, nobody is with you. There's a tendency that you may grab it and go directly with that sin. Then, if that will happen. You committed a sin with God and also with your family. So that's why two are better than one. So always remember, do not tell me that you will go for evangelism to a place where the sins are already working there. Bring someone with you. Otherwise, you will forget that you are already a Christian and your main job there is to evangelize. But at the end, you are also doing what they are doing. Whether playing something, whether drinking something, or sniffing something, then you ended up, you spoiled your life being a Christian during that time. That's why he didn't say in the last part, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them out. It's too sad. So that's why when you're going for a place, especially if this place is a little bit, a lot of Temptations are there. Bring someone with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. What are the names of the disciples? Can you name one? Peter, Peter Mark, Matthew. Luke, John, John, and so on. Let's see. Matthew chapter 10, verse 2. Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, and then Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These are the names of the disciples of Jesus Christ, and consisting of 12. There was one church, as I remember, uh, Brother Darrell, in their church in, 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 uh, in Dubai, each leader, they need to have maximum 12 disciples only. After the 12, then his 12 disciples needs to find another 12. It's a very good counting because when you have 12, I think that will be enough for you to handle all your disciples. Instead of one leader, will handle the big groups of disciples, it is better to have 12, so at least you can concentrate with them. You can easily know and ask them what are the things that are going in their life. Amen? In our church, so in the leader of our, leadership of our church, we're looking 
for our members to become a disciples of one of our leaders. So if somebody will approach you, can I be your disciple? What are you going to answer? Not sure? So in the future, you know, the leader of the church, of our church, for sure, that they will get some disciples also who are already involved in our church so that they will be trained and then in the later part we will see what's going on. Next slide. The Last Supper, if you still remember that we're always mentioning this during our communion, that on the night he was betrayed, they are these, they call it the Last Supper. <coughs> They're joining together. We don't know if that is the, I am sure 100%, this is not the right setting. Because for sure during that time, they don't have a very nice, we can say, the way that they're wearing everything is like very colorful and so on. Maybe some of them are a bit old, close to ready. But as you can see, they're having a last supper together with Jesus Christ. What are the work of the disciples before they are called? Somebody know? Fishermen. Okay, fishermen. It says here in Luke chapter 3, Jesus called his first disciples. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. This is the first two, which is uh, Peter and uh, his brother Andrew. The next one is going on from there, somewhere away from the place where Peter and uh, Andrew was there, Jesus met another two brothers, James son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets, Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The last one, Matthew, chapter 9, verse 1, it says, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Jesus are looking for disciples regardless of work or position that we have. Who are builders here? Builders. Who are electrician? Who are what else? Who are working in the office? And so on. Painters. Nobody's racing. The students. Oh, the homie is racing. So here, Jesus are, are looking for disciples regardless of work or position. Brethren, if you will take a look with this, when Jesus was looking for disciples, he did not look for a disciples who are learning or studying the Word of God only. He's looking for indifferent people, whether they are tax collectors or whether they are fishermen and doctors like John. At the end, Jesus is looking for a disciples regardless of work or position. And what are the response of the disciples when they are called? They said yes immediately or what? Let's see. Two brothers Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to peace for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Can you imagine? They are there in the fishing area. And all of a sudden, when they hear the voice of Jesus Christ, they left what they are doing and they followed Christ. So what will happen now with their boats, their fishing nets, their work, and so on. Going to the next one, two of other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Jesus called them, and immediately 
they left the boat and their father and followed him. And the last one, Matthew, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew, follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. What we have, we have seen in these three passages that when they were called by Jesus, they followed immediately. What they think? Why they followed Jesus Christ? Immediately. Without any delay. Because they know already Jesus Christ before they came. For sure, they heard already an information or a message that Jesus was preaching and doing miracle things. If somebody will approach you nowadays, I'll give you an example. If was we can say a good speaker known in the uh, in the Christian world. I'll give you an example. Steve Murrell, one of the founder of every nation. If the person will talk to you and say, Shirley, follow me. <coughs> and you know that he has a very big numbers of followers talking about 100,000 of followers because he's following Jesus Christ. You gonna follow? Yes, amen. Same thing with Jesus. During that time, he was very famous already that a lot of people know about him. So that's why when they were called, they know already that this is Jesus Christ that they need to follow. And they know that Jesus Christ can change their life. And they know that Jesus Christ can help them to share the word of God with the other people in the later part. So that's why at the end of this, disciples that was done by Jesus, they were sent as a twelve. Just, just to share the word of God with the other place. Amen. Now, here it says, they followed Jesus immediately. Can you imagine who's having a father here? If you have a father, for sure, before you leave your father, you need to finish all your jobs there instead of going out. That will be for sure. But what happened? They left and they leave their father. If Jesus is calling you, just listen to this. If Jesus is calling you, are you willing to follow him? Oh, there's no amen. 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 If Jesus is calling you, are you willing to follow him? Amen. 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 Immediately? Amen. Oh, it's getting less. Amen. So, you know, doing it immediately is not so easy to do that for sure. Because sometimes you need to think of, am I ready to follow Jesus Christ? But when we're looking at the passage, we can see 100% that they followed immediately because they know Jesus Christ. Same thing with each and every one of you. If you know already that Jesus was there and somebody is calling you as one of the leader of the church to be a disciple, then I hope you will follow you will attend with the discipleship program that we have. Amen. 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 Oh, it's too hard. It, it, that is immediately, huh? When to follow is easy, but immediately, that's something that needs to be double checked from our side if we are ready first. Why it is very hard to follow Jesus? Why? Because. The apostle following Jesus in Matthew 8, it says here, When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Can you imagine this teacher of the law? He's a Pharisee. Okay? He's asking Jesus Christ. He's not a true follower of Jesus Christ. He's only saying this like testing Jesus Christ. And he said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Then Jesus knew what he wants to say. And he answered saying, 
Jesus replied, Foxes have been dense and birds have nest, but the Son of Man has no place, place to lay his head. What does it mean to you? But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. When you say Son of Man, he's, Jesus is talking about himself and has no place to, to lay his head. Jesus has no permanent house to lay his head or head during that time. If you remember, Jesus is traveling from one place to another to share the word of God. He doesn't have a like us who are living in Abonet. You go somewhere else in the evening, you go back. You go back. You go somewhere else and then you go back again. So Jesus, when he was teaching, he was preaching, wherever he got the night away from the place he came from, then they would stay there and sleep on that place. Can you do that easily? It's too hard, right? When you're sharing the word, and I'll give an example, you went to Dunedin just to share the word of God there. And then you need to stay there for the whole night instead of going back here. And then from Dunedin, you need to go to somewhere down, which is in, where it is? In Bergkartel. And then from there, you need to share the word of God. So Jesus has no permanent house to lay his hand. And the follower of Jesus must be ready to relocate. Amen? One day, if maybe Brother Roy was called by God, along with Brother Pijo, where's Brother Pijo? Outside. Oh, outside. Upset. And God has calling them to go to another place. Maybe in Queenstown to share the word of God. So it's a call. Are you ready to go in Queenstown to share the word of God? And the second part is another disciple said to him, Now, first one is the teacher of the law, and the second one is his disciple, and said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own. What does it mean to you? Let the dead bury their own dead. Jesus was talking to a family who are not following the word of God or Jesus Christ. But at the same time, it says here that Jesus wants us to prioritize Him more than anyone in this world. Can you pray your test, Jesus Christ? Hmm. Let's see. The follower of Jesus must be ready to serve. You know, if something are, are going on in your life, especially negative thing, if you're facing a big problem in your life, can you still come in the church and serve Him? That's too difficult. It requires faith in God to do that. A lot of Christians, they decided to leave the church because when they are offended and when they are feeling so much slow, when they are feeling they are out from the ministry and fellowship and so on, they are leaving the church. But if in your heart, if in your heart, you are looking directly with Jesus, whatever happens, with your surrounding, you need to serve God. Amen? Can you tell to the next person, say, do you want to serve God? Do you want to serve God? Amen. Amen. We want to serve God. You know, even Jesus, He said, I came here to serve. Jesus came here in this world to serve people. We are not here to observe. Now the question is, do you want to serve? Or do you want to observe? We want to serve. Amen? We want to serve. We want to serve. Because if what we're doing is observe, 
then, then there's danger with that. You may only offend other people and you will not grow because you are observing. Observing may be the person next to you and you're saying, that's for you. When the bad thing happens, you are telling, telling to the next person to you, that's for you. But if it is a blessing, that's for me. <laughs> so in our life being Christian, you know, we need to know in practical ways also. We're not only looking directly with the Bible verses and so on, but at the same time, we need to know what's going on in a practical life. Like, as I said earlier, you want to serve or not serve? So we want to serve. Amen. Next one. The cost of being a disciple. 25, Luke chapter 14, 25 to 26. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, Brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. It's a very strong word from Jesus. Can you imagine that it's saying here that if anyone comes to me does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Do you think it is a literal that we need to hate our loved ones? No. Meaning, we need to know what is our priority. Is our priority is our loved ones? Or our priority is Jesus Christ? I'll give you an example. When you're in the church service, you know that our timing here to start is 10.30. In the morning. 10.30, huh? not 10.35 or 10.40. You want to go to the church. But the problem if your partner don't want to go, are you going to the church? Or you just stay with your love because she needs you or he needs you? There is always a decision that can happen in a daily basis. Whether we want to go in the church or we want only to stay at home. Following Jesus is not so easy. It requires faith with Him and balance Him, making sure that we are giving Him also a priority. Amen. It's a little bit harsh with this, with this one. It's too hard. But we need to do it. Otherwise, such a person cannot be my disciple. We don't need to hate, but give them if possible, a second priority than Jesus. As an example, life group. Oh, we have a life group today. 7 p.m. in the house of uh, Pastor Nelson, in the house of uh, Pastor Joel. And then you're not feeling well. Are you going to attend? Or just stay at home with your loved one? In every situation, there is always a decision, right? Whether you will do this, which is the right in the eyes of God, or you will do, it, you will do this, it is the right in the eyes of your loved ones. The decision is always in ours. Second part, and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. What does it mean, carry their cross? Do you want to carry physically the cross as we are serving God? No. It says here, Jesus wants us to give up everything to be His disciple. We want Jesus Christ that we need to give up everything to be His disciples. What do you think? Are you holding something? Let's see. Jesus wants us to give up everything to be his disciple and 
Here in Luke chapter 14 verse 33, the cause of being a disciple is, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. When Jesus said, give up everything you have, what are those things? What do you think? It is a material possession? It is a sin? Or what? Here, a question which is, it requires an answer for each and every one of us. What are those everything to give up? Do you want to know? Tell to the next person to you, keep awake. Oh, don't sleep, okay? Now, here, it says here, in Luke chapter 14, uh, uh, Proverbs 11, 2 and James 4, 6. To give up everything that can keep us away from, from Jesus, number one is pride of life. Pride is the one that can cause us to go to Jesus Christ. It is our pride. You want to know more? It says here in Proverbs 11, 2 that when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Praise God. That's why you need to balance ourselves. If we think, if we have seen ourselves that we are like so much showing pride, then the disgrace can happen in our life. Amen? You know, Jesus Christ he wants us to become a humble person, whether we are male or female. When we are humble and when we're talking to different people, we can easily, you know, convince them. We can easily get their attention when we're humble, right? But if you are having a lot of pride talking to the other people, you can easily approach them. Like when you see the person, first time, huh? Assuming that you have seen Takumi for the first time. Hi Takumi, why are you attending these charts? Mm, very strong. Right? So we need to humble ourselves. When we humble ourselves, for sure, wisdom will come and we will gain more with the knowledge, with the Word of God. As it says, if you lack wisdom, Ask God. Pray to God. Do you want wisdom? Amen. Amen. Wisdom is very important. Without wisdom in your life, you will only follow what's going on in this world. Without looking, what is the right thing to do in the eyes of God? Amen? Amen. Next one. But He gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Who wants to be opposed by God? No one. No one in our group or in our church for sure that want to be opposed by God. And what we want is to get favor from God. You want to, be, to get the favor from God? Can you tell to the person next to you, you want to get a favor from God? Humble yourself. Yeah. Humble yourself. Amen. Next one. Materialistic. Who among us are materialistic here? You know, I'll give an example. A person which is materialistic. He has already a mobile and it is working fine. But he's still looking for the latest one. As an example. Even that one may cause so much pain in the pocket. Okay? Materialistic. You already have one ring here. You want another ring here. Another here. And maybe you want here in the nose. Materialistic. You already have five coats. You know, 
you're wearing, when you're wearing a nose lid, sometimes you're wearing a coat or a coat with that. You already have five with different colors and you still have one more or multiple numbers. Oh, it's a rich person already. But uh, let us read what it says in Luke chapter 9. You know when we read this passage 9 and 3, you will be surprised. Jesus said with his disciples, he told them, take nothing for the journey, no stuff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. What you're bringing? Yourself. Without anything in the pocket, without food, without stuff to hold in anything, that's too hard. I'll give an example. If I will tell you, Brother Jonathan, can you go to uh, Queenstown and share the word of God? Don't bring anything. Don't bring any bag, don't bring any money. Just walk. Queenstown. That's too hard. Right? But Jesus was commanded with his disciples when he's sending them from different places. You know, sometimes having so much money, sometimes it can give us pride. When we have the money, you, you go to some place, and then you're buying something, you have some bread. Oh, buy it all. I'll, I'll pay it for you. It can happen. Okay. Here it says in Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 27. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bars, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? No one can give an additional day. It will lessen your life. Why? Because when you are in a worry, it will increase and it goes into a anxiety. When it is anxiety, it goes to depression. When you are in a depression, it will go to psychotic and you want to kill yourself. When you are on that part in psychotic, I tell you, you cannot think the right thing to do. For sure, it will go to your mind is what? Kill yourself. Did you hurt for anyone like your friend? That they're buried down in their lap and they're telling you they want to kill themselves? Did you hear some of your friends saying that, you know, I'm someone is, uh, you know, someone is telling me something to do something which is not good? Have you heard that with your friend? I'm sure you have some friends where they experience that one. And with that situation, we don't want to happen in our life. Amen? We want to be free. We want to be happy. So that's why. Do not worry. I remember in this part, brethren, do not worry what you will eat or drink. I want to show you some, share with you something. When we were in, um, in Oakland with uh, Brother Pijo, Marlon, and uh, Jesse, and my wife, we're getting hungry. And we're looking for a place where we can eat. We're searching so much. The Burger King is already there close to that, or, or Subway. But we try to find another place to eat. So we spent more than 30 minutes trying to find the place where we can eat. Because of those delays, for being very selective, we ended up paying another hour with the uh, Sky Tower parking fee, which is very expensive. <laughs> So that's why sometimes we need to be, to be aware for the things that are happening in our life. Next one. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will. Is this good, pleasing, and perfect will? What does it mean conform to the pattern of this, this world? Meaning that when something is already available and acceptable here on earth, Sometimes we are following. Sometimes it's too hard, you know, to mention this, but it is happening. I'll give an example. Hmm. Who have an account with Facebook? 
All of us. Nobody speak. Are you shy? All of us have our own accounts, right? Maybe the others they're only in two accounts. One for the good friends and one for the bad friends. Oh, don't do that, huh? Amen? Oh, the others are lovely. Maybe they're doing it. Okay, as we move forward, hmm, our FB group, who, are, who has seen this group? This Facebook group. So in our Facebook group, this is our uh, main photo. This is the picture was taken last year in uh, Living Spring, 2018. During that time, all of us were very happy, energized with the Word of God. During that time. <coughs> now, Why this time? <laughs> let's see. Our every page group page. <coughs> this is the message that I posted about <coughs> the servant for our service. You know. You know, like. like by two, <laughs> sin by four, not sin by 33. It's too sad. It's too sad. Brethren, when you open your Facebook, normally it will go to, the, to your timeline. First thing that I, I used to check is, you know, the numbers of people that like or posted something, which is okay. But the hard thing, if we forgot to go to our group. Can you imagine, we have 24 participants here. If only person knows that we posted this one, for sure, when you come here on Sunday, you will ask, are you, uh, are you, you are ministering in this way? Oh, I'm part of it. That's why it's very important. Next one. Ah, here. Sister Alma, you are a food server and Sister Viola. Today. It's here. That's why. I don't welcome. So that's why we need to read that word, please. Okay, next one. This one. I posted this about the, the, in Luke chapter 15 about the parables of Jesus Christ and the step by step production of Christians. It is like by two, sin by two, and not sin by 35. But, brethren, just to, to be honest with you, I can see that a lot of you are online. But why not visiting our page? You know, every time that I open my, my, my Facebook, I need to go in this page. If I'm not seeing, nobody is liking or seeing or commenting something, it seems like this is already a purpose or useless in your Facebook account. But it is true. It's too sad that, you know, our church were trying to grow, but even our members itself don't want to like or to see our post in our group. When you go to the other group or the other post, you can see that there are a lot of likes. They're liking them. Out of our church activity. They're liking more compared with our epic group. You know, brethren, my encouragement with you, uh, try to like or even open our, uh, you know, post in our group. Because it will help you a lot to grow as a Christian and to know what's going on in our church. Amen? Here, recurring and unforgiving sins. 
In Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, it says here, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left. What does it mean? If we know already that it is a sin, but we are still continuously doing that, there's no more to think of, to ask for forgiveness because, you know, you know already it is a sin. So that's why in the second verse it says, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of breaking fire that will consume the enemies of God. So this second verse is a very strong one that if we are already know that it is a sin but we are still continuously doing that, then we need to face the wall, our God, that what we are doing is not correct and we will end it up in a consuming fire. Nobody wants to face or to go in the consuming fire. What we want is to go to heaven with Jesus Christ. Amen. We're getting closer. Here, can we give up everything for Jesus about the pride of our life? Can I hear amen for everyone? Amen. amen. The second one, can we do something to control ourselves being materialistic? Amen. amen. And the last one, this is a little bit hard, but you know, we need to do this. Are we willing to give up those recurring or unforgiveness sins that we have? I hear only uh, Takumi. Amen. <laughs> Where are the rest? So our answer must be? Amen! Amen. Amen. Mm. You know, as we follow Christ, we need to consider to check these three things. The pride of life, the materialistic thing, and the last one is recurring and unforgiven sins. Now, once we have done to remove all those things in our life, then when Jesus sent us, when Jesus brought us to another place, then we can directly say that we can proclaim the good news and healing every people wherever we go. Do do we want to share the word of God to the other people? Amen. Do we want to heal other people? Amen. Amen. If that will happen, we can easily say that the work of God is also working in your life. Amen. So with that, for sure, as we share the word of God to the others, to the other people, we heal other people then I'm sure we will see the harvest in our church in due time. Amen? Amen. With that, we're closing our message today. Don't forget those three things that we have discussed. And one day, I'm sure that God will send you Amen? But the only key is those things that needs to be removed in our life. Let us try to work out with them. If you are still holding one of them. Or all of them. Amen? Well, let us close in prayer. Can you stand? And we'll close in prayer. Sorry, maybe my message is a bit long, but I hope that this will help you out with your life. As you follow Jesus Christ. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father of God, your message has been revealed, O oh Lord God, that as you sent the twelve by twos to go in different places in this world, where at the end they proclaim your name, they proclaim your word, and they heal the sick people of oh God. Father of oh God, we pray that one day in this church all our members who are attending here one day they will also be sent
to another place to share your word with power, with strength, and with a spirit coming from you, O Lord. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have received that.